My name is Matt Carlos and we are in DaVinci Resolve. So I had some people, including my personal friends, hound me about making a video about the compositing modes that are in the color tab. Now, making a video that describes what each and every one of them does will just take too long because honestly, we only really wanna use the ones that are the best for the job. My personal experience, I have tested all these out. I have verified that these compositing modes that I'm gonna be going over today are the most useful because they have the least risk of destroying your footage and they offer the most artistic freedom. So with that being said, let's jump right in. So I've divided all of these compositing modes into types. First, we're going to go over the lighten modes. The first compositing mode that we're going to go over is screen. I'm going to slap this on the screen right now. Boom. So what this is going to be doing is it's going to gently brighten the image. How is it doing that? It's brightening the lighter pixels and blending them with the image that comes before. Its best application, in my opinion, is adding a soft glow, like in my artistic looks, lifting the shadows just a teeny tiny bit, and creating dreamy highlights. This has a minimal risk of clipping. The compositing modes are best tweaked because if you apply them 100% right out of the box, they're not gonna look too great. So we're gonna go to the keyer, like I usually reference in like every single one of my videos, and we're gonna kill this key output and bring it down. I'm actually gonna put this at 0.25. If I turn this off and on that this is softening our image this has a harsh bias towards shadows and highlights it doesn't really attack the mid-tones as much it tries to keep them preserved i'm going to show you guys a creative way of using this this is my secret sauce i am going to park my radius for my blur at two and then come in here and crank on this as you can see adding a blur to it now is adding this haze and we can drag this up pretty far without breaking our image if you look at the scopes on the bottom right. Yeah, but this is how I add my haze or my dreamy glow into my videos. So yeah, cat's out the bag. Let's move on to the next one. Reset the node. Now we're gonna go for linear dodge. And right out the box, ugh, nasty, right? But there's one caveat to this. This is gonna brighten the image with a huge emphasis on the highlights, way more than screen. We can control this by adding a power window. And let's just say I wanted to brighten up her, just her face and just one side of her face right here. I'm going to go to the same key here and kill this off. And I'm going to bring this up. Remember what I said, how it has a bias towards the highlights? It's not really hitting your hair as hard, but it still looks organic. I park this at like 0.3 and I zoom in. You can see that this is almost indistinguishable. This looks really natural. And this is the beauty of the compositing modes, guys. I do think that all of these are like mathematically accurate and they look so organic. And I've been using these on power windows for a little bit now and experimenting with them. And that's just the amazing part about these. So with that being said, to put it simple, the linear dodge, it brightens and boosts the highlights and adds more energy to them, in my opinion. And this is best used to emphasize your bright elements or if you're into doing beauty or fashion stuff, you can use it to brighten people's faces up organically as long as the lighting makes sense in the scene. However, be careful, this has a high risk of clipping if the if you don't use masks that are targeted, okay? All right, reset the node. Now we're gonna go to color dodge. Now, this, this looks like really bad too, but color dodge does two things. It brightens the highlights, but with a color emphasis in mind. It also amplifies the saturation. This is great for vivid looks with sunlight in them, such as this one. You have the craziest risk of overexposuring, or you have the craziest risk of clipping when using this, be super careful. So to control this, I'm actually gonna go down to my qualifier. I'm gonna select luminance only right over here. I'm gonna bring this highlight down and then I'm gonna increase the softness. I'm gonna bring it down to a point that it's only attacking everything besides the windows. And then I'm gonna bring this down and I'm bring this back up until I get a more organic look. And as you can see, it looks great. It's adding a natural amount of saturation as well as bringing up the brightest parts and not leaving the shadows alone, but not really prioritizing them. And that is all the lighten mode. So let's move to the darken modes now. Let's reset this node. Okay, now we're gonna get into the darken modes. We, I have two for you today. So first we have multiply. This is gonna deepen the shadows, enhance contrast, darken the image by multiplying pixel values. So that's how it's actually achieving this. And I would use this for moody or cinematic looks. This is just, this is just great. Also keep in mind that killing off some of the saturation helps because when you do add contrast into a photo, or a video, you're gonna be adding saturation by proxy. So reset the node. Let's go to color burn now. 
All right, color burn is extremely aggressive. Uh, this is going to add deep shadows and intense saturation. It's going to darken your image by boosting your shadows very much. This is good for gritty and textured looks and for the moody grading as well. But I would use this super sparingly because as you can see, it loves to make your shadows just dip super hard. I've only used this a couple times. I've only really used this in footage that I got that was really, really, really lacking contrast. I haven't really used this for anything creative recently, but I do appreciate the fact that it attacks the darkest points and brings them down very aggressively in an organic way. Let's reset this note. So let's get onto our contrast modes. These all can be used to apply contrast to your image. These are like one-click wonders. Let's start with soft light. Soft light is gonna be the most mild of all of these. This is gonna subtly boost the contrast and color richness, is gentle about brightening and darkening your image. This produces more of a natural look. This one enhances the skin tones the most. I really do like how this looks just by slapping it on. And I see the most tonal separation when I use this blend mode. This is fantastic, I, I love it. This is subtle enough, but also gives you some punch. Honestly, there's nothing really other than just slapping it on that I recommend because it actually just improves your look if you just need a little bit of pop at the end. So now we're going to move on, reset the node. We're going to go to overlay. Overlay is a bit more aggressive right out of the box. And this produces strong contrast and vivid colors. It's actually kind of a mix of two other blend modes. This is a mix of multiply and screen. It has the same type of way of handling the image. This boosts mid-tone contrast and creates it's very punchy, dramatic looks, but just keep in mind that there could be harsh transitions in your color tonality. I'd recommend pulling back your key output or using masks to avoid that. All right, reset the note again. Let's go to pin light. Pin light's interesting because it, you won't notice a, a difference until you pull up and down on your contrast curve. And this is a contrast mode that's going to attack your midtones. It's only it's only going to attack those midtones. It's going to very aggressively attack them too. In fact, this is going to retain your highlights and shadows but almost remove your midtones if you drag the curve too far. This can create fashion style visuals because if you need a little bit of punch in just your midtones, you can bring the curve up. If you need a little bit less in your midtones, you can bring the curve down. I would use this very selectively for creative looks. You have a high risk of clipping if you go too crazy with this. All right, now I have two bonus modes I'm gonna include. So the first one, let me reset this node, is going to be the exclusion compositing mode. Now exclusion is interesting. It's going to create surreal or dreamy pastel tones right out of the box. How is it doing this? It's inverting the tone slowly, but blending it with the original image. I would use this for dreamy looks, pastel visuals, or like surreal effects. And this best works with the key output turned down. Like you wanna be very subtle with this. See, even, even going past like 16%, this is, this is already making drastic changes in my image. The reason I don't use this over screen to make my haze is because this is actually gonna suck a lot of the tonality out of your footage. This can work super well, assuming that you wanna take some of the color out and you want to add a little bit of haze at the same time, but I would be super careful with it. And then the last bonus one, let's reset this note, is gonna be luminosity. Now, I had a commenter ask about this. Luminosity makes it so that when you change the values, especially in your curves, right? If I go to the red channel and I bring it up and down, it's only gonna be changing the luminosity in the red channel. Same thing for the green, same thing for the blue. But when I go to my Y channel, which controls just the contrast of the image, now I'm going to be able to change the tonality without actually changing my hue or my saturation. This is super important. I prefer to change the compositing mode to luminosity in my contrast node because I don't want it affecting anything else. I just want to change the contrast of my image using the luminosity. I don't want to affect the hue. I don't want to affect the saturation. Working in a vacuum makes things safer sometimes and I get less color banding when I just operate and add contrast using this mode. And before I go, everybody, I actually made a compositing mode cheat sheet. If anyone would like access to it, uh, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube, follow me on Instagram, then DM me on Instagram, and I can give you access to the Google Drive that has this cheat sheet inside of it. All right, everybody. Well, with that being said, um, that's it. And if anybody has any questions, just feel free to go to the comments. If you have any special requests, just DM me or leave a comment, and I will see you guys later.